Zareen Shaw is live on Capitol Hill along with Jeffrey Robbins, former chief minority counsel at the Senate Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations. Glad to have you both. Zareen, let's start with you. You know, the committee says it's going to focus on this 187 minutes between Trump's speech at the White House rally and his public statement trying to quell the riot after getting a lot of pressure to do so from members of his staff. Let's talk about his actions during that specific time and what resulted in a deadly insurrection. Yeah, 187, that is the key number that the committee will be talking about. That is the time between when Trump stood near the White House and encouraged his supporters to go to the Capitol to the time when he told them to back down. The committee wants us to learn exactly what happened during that time frame, and they will show us who the president will, was talking to, what they urged him to do, and then when Donald Trump found out exactly what was happening at the Capitol. There's going to be two people who's going to be spelling out exactly what happened during that time or what they learned. The first person is Sarah Matthews. She is the former deputy press secretary under Kayleigh McEnany. She calls what happened on January 6th one of the darkest moments in American history and she says if it had happened in any other country it would be called a coup attempt. She resigned very soon after the attacks. And then there's Matthew Pottinger. He was Trump's National Security Council on Trump's National Security Council. He was there for all four years. He had seen people come and go but he said he decided to resign the moment he saw President Trump's tweet saying that Michael Pence was not courageous enough. And Jeffrey, Attorney General Merrick Garland is saying that no person is above the law in this country. So does the Justice Department have what it needs to actually pursue criminal charges against former President Trump? And if so, why haven't they already? Well, good morning, Kira. That's a very good question. They have what they need. The problem is, as uh, Congressman Adam Schiff, himself a former prosecutor, has said, uh, there doesn't seem to be a level of energy in the department that's commensurate with the evidence that they've received. And so you have uh, a Department of Justice which sometimes seems as though they're somewhere between somnolescent and sedated. That's a concern on the part of the committee, and that's part of why these hearings are so important. It is to essentially goose, which is not exactly the jurisprudential phrase, the department into action. So you don't have prosecutors saying, well, gee, guys, you have some really interesting evidence here. How did you do that? The Department of Justice has far more tools for obtaining evidence than the committee. And the committee's hope, I think, is that the department will get uh, off the stick. Jeffrey, you always have a way with words. I appreciate it so much. <laughs> Zorin, the Secret Service, you know, continues to stand by its story that it lost nearly all the text messages during this time period surrounding the insurrection. Those texts subpoenaed by the committee. So what's the latest on this? The committee says they're really concerned. They release a statement overnight saying the data migration system that purged those text messages is impossible violation of the Federal Records Act. Only one text message was turned over to the committee. From all those text messages exchanged between Secret Service agents on January 5th and January 6th. And the committee wants to make it clear that every attempt has to be taken to get that data back. Look, these Secret Service agents are the people who are often the closest to the president and the vice president. And what they saw that day, what they said could be critical in our understanding of what happened on January 6th. So Jeffrey, finally, you know, does it surprise you that the Secret Service would actually delete texts? And could the Secret Service face legal consequences for deleting those messages? Uh, the answers are yes and yes. You know, the goal, the uh, Secret Service has generally been regarded as the gold standard of law enforcement and with good reason. Surely there have been some instances, uh, some publicized over the last uh, years, where a few of their agents have had, as the expression goes, a, f a few too many martinis and bad conduct has ensued. But generally, they're regarded as the gold standard and Americans are going to want answers. Uh, any federal judge before whom I've ever appeared would, under these circumstances, immediately order a hearing, an evidentiary hearing, into how this possibly could have occurred, who was responsible for it, uh, why it happened, and why the evidence can't be retrieved. And I would expect that this committee is going to pursue those questions and that, yes, there could very well be legal consequences for those involved. All right, stay tuned. We'll talk more. Jeffrey Robbins, Reen Shaw, thank you both very much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.